Right. Well, well oh, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry I'm yeah. counting it. Well, welcome, everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom, where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today, we're going to be going over the ergonomics of dry fitting. So if you uh, are unfamiliar with dry fitting, we did a previous stream on dry fitting as it relates to pad cups and pad cup orientation. Uh, so check that video out. And we also have an article on musicmedic.com called the four variables of pad installation. And if you check both of those, you'll be able to understand the larger picture of the overhaul or uberhaul process. And uh, we're gonna be getting into a small detail of it today. Um, so Ryan, uh, as far as we're gonna be talking about key touches. So this is gonna be kind of player uh, centered, not really player centered, but it's something- about the player, yeah. Connecting the player to the instrument, not having the weird key thing. So allowing them to move around as they need to. And then for those who haven't seen us, can you just very quickly just talk about dry fitting as it relates to pad cups and, and padding? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, no, uh, pad cups and padding, yeah, it's dry fitting in, in, in relation to pad cups and padding, the kind of those four variables. Uh, the first one being having a level tone hole. Okay. Uh, second one being a level pad cup. Uh, the third one having a level pad, and then the fourth being your key fitting so that the keys, uh, the pad cup doesn't shift back and forth. You get any little movement back and forth, lateral motion, you're not going to have a good seal. So it's the four variables of, you know, obviously dry fitting kind of being the fifth, every, orienting all your pad cups and all that. Um, so what we're dealing with here is now the key touches themselves, uh, making everything feel good. We, we've oriented our pad cups. Um, you know, over the tone holes properly. This is going to help us out with padding. When we start moving the touches around, palm key touches, left hand table, CE flat, side key touches, um, we're now making it more ergonomic for the player. Okay. Um, and, and, and is it safe to say that the last third of dry fitting uh, relates to the player or the, the touches and yes. setup? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, those two thirds being kind of the, the importance of getting the pad cups over the tone holes. So mm -hmm. padding is easier. Now that last third, getting your touches, so everything kind of feels good. Cool. The first thing I'll do is do the pad cups. Once I get those, then I work on touches. Okay, very good. So let's talk about the first area that we wanted to today, which is the C and E flat key. C and the E flat right here, yes. Okay. It's a very, it's a common area. Um, having these two touches, your C, your C touch and your E flat touch. So it's safe to say that I've oriented my pad cup over the tone hole for my C and also my E flat. Now I can focus in on my touches and how they feel. And if you look at those from kind of a, a player standpoint, here's my E flat, here's my C. Okay? And here they are both in the resting position. What you want to have happen is the E flat to actually be higher than the C. And that comes down to when they, um, players will roll from E flat down to C. If this is even like they are kind of now, when I press this down, now you can see how much it's lower. So trying to get over that hump is a little bit tougher. Sliding up mm. is usually not a problem. Right, going from E flat, or sorry, going from C to E flat. So what I want to do is I want to raise that E flat. I guess we can talk quickly about some of the tools that I'm going to use. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, let's bring them through some tools. There There's my overhead tools. I will not be using the phone, uh, <laughs> but I will be using everything else here. The, the first being um, these Nipex duckbill pliers. Um, I like them because the jaws are adjustable. I can grab a variety of different sized things in a variety of different areas, like grabbing the sides of key touches. Um, I also like them because they are parallel and I get a lot more contact when the, something is parallel versus grabbing like this, okay, with a normal traditional pair of pliers. Um, so I really like the Nipex duckbill. I have both the large and the small. Um, I also have a pair of these guys right here. You can see these are neat because it has that hook, which I can actually get in under key touches and bend it that way. These are a pair of Stuval especially pliers. Um, as you can see, I use the, these quite a bit. Um, bending levers, okay? These are also very handy when you need to bend keys and key touches. Um, I also have a couple of material that I will use to actually cushion the jaws um, if you need to, you know, worry about the finish. You don't want to mar the finish. So we have a little bit. You can just use regular standard tan sax pad leather. Uh, I also like to use some kangaroo skin because um, it is very strong and is also very soft. 
So, yeah. so you just have, you cut those into little pieces and put them on the jaws themselves, or you just yeah. kind of drape it over the you can do area. You can do it either. I've done it both ways where I've actually cut little pieces out and glued it to the jaws here. I've also done it where I've just wrapped it around and then grabbed it mm. like so. Okay. Um, either one, either one is fine. Okay, uh, very cool. Yeah. So let's talk about this C and this E flat right here. Okay, you can see in the resting position that this E flat is even if not slightly lower than this C. And again, I want this E flat to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to adjust that E flat. I'm going to bring that E flat up. Right, for that, I'm going to use these guys right here. And you can see with that little hook, I can actually get it in under the touch. Right, and then just very gently bring it up. I'm always being very careful anytime I'm bending with the key being still on the instrument. Okay, because you run the risk of damaging key work, messing up posts, so just be very, very careful. But you can see, if we go to our super up close, extreme up close, that now I've adjusted, let me show you from the player's perspective, mm. how this E flat is now slightly higher than my C. That way when I go from E flat and I roll down, they're a little bit more even. Okay? Going from C to E flat, a little bit easier. And that's going to help with the key, any key where you have to play, you know, E flat to C sharp. That's right. Yep. You're mm -hmm. working on the key of B major. Rich, guess what? I do this ah. key more, you can finally play B major. Finally. finally. All right. Those guitar players are so happy. <laughs> okay. certainly you are. can see how much easier it is for me to roll, especially if your, your rollers are moving smoothly. Uh, going from E flat to C is very easy now. So that's, that's a major area uh, for dry fitting when it rega when, in regards to ergonomics and playability. Now, Ryan, can we also talk about uh, another area of the right hand, the right hand side keys, or right hand palm keys? Yep, these guys right here. Okay, so we have our side E, or high E, side C, and side B flat. You can see already right now how they're not really in line, and that tends to happen with these guys. They get bent out of proportion. The keys have a, a lot of length to them. They tend to flex. They don't have key contacts. They'll get all out of adjustment. Um, but this is a very common thing to have happen where the keys aren't exactly in line. We make them uh, or we orient them so that it has a nice streamline. Everything's even this way. Everything even is this way. The same part of your hand plays both. So why would you have those in different positions? Um, so really thinking about orienting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this side E so that it's not tilted like this, I'm just going to orient it so it's a little bit more in line with the rest of my keys. And for that, I'm going to use my Nipex duckbill. So again, I'm grabbing, I could grab this a new number of different places. I could open these up like so. I can actually grab on the side of the key like so. Um, I'm just going to grab this spine that's here in the back and I'm just going to tweak that key just there like that. Now you can see how it's a little bit more in line at least this one and this one this one still has a little bit where it's tipped out a little bit so again i can grab in i can grab the spine or i think what i'm going to do this time is i am going to grab the touch itself and i'm just going to tweak it now ryan i noticed that on the e key you you kind of bent it over a little bit and the the key itself swung back yes yep. so it, you got to think about that if i were to grab it here versus up here Mm -hmm. on this spine. I don't know if we can, there we go. We gonna, so I grabbed it kind of back in here and made my adjustment happen here. If I were to grab it back up in here, it might not exactly swing that back into place. So you got to think about where you're grabbing it. So you can grab it up here on this area here. You can grab it under here. You can grab the actual sides of the touches and tweak it this way. But you can see now how we have our side keys are a little bit more in line, a little bit more level, a little bit straighter. It looks a lot neater. Those classical players oh. love grab it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You, you familiar with that one? Grab it. That's a Rick. good. That's a good piece. Yep. Good old, good old piece. All right. Let's. So we've talked about the side keys. Can we also now talk about, say, the stacks, the right hand and, yes. and the left hand? If um, which... like we said, there there's some areas that you can't really adjust. The right hand, you notice that the the key pearls are attached to the pad cups. So there's nothing we can do really um, that will change the ergonomics of the touches down here. They're attached to the pad cups. We've oriented our pad cups over the tone holes. For padding and that has to kind of stay. Although the left hand, we have a little bit more freedom, especially with our A and our G key. You can see this G key has a very long arm and it's actually separate from the pad cup. Okay, so I can adjust this pearl uh, however I want almost. Um, I really think about when I am adjusting my G pearl, my pinky and my ring finger 
being as close together as possible. I don't want too much of a spread, and then it gets a little awkward, your hands spread out. Uh, it just doesn't feel as good. So I will think about my G key. Yeah, and then you end up with one of my those. my G sharp, yeah, you end up with something like that where you, it looks like you're throwing up gang signs. Yeah. Okay, we don't want that. What is that, a Pac-Man? Is that a dog? You doing shadow puppets over there? Okay, <laughs> we don't want that. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually take this and I'll bend this pearl down a little bit and I'll angle it down. So you get a little bit more of an ergonomic feel to that. Everything feels a little bit smoother. Same thing with the A. Okay, I'll take that A pearl and I'll bend that down. So what you may have to do, because you're doing the striping, is you may have to adjust the underside of that key. You may have to file a little bit so you can get the proper amount of material in there because you are changing that angle. But that's a great area right here. Up here, this front F key is a great place to, um, to get some, uh, some nice ergonomics. You can just take, again, your nice hex pliers. You can grab here the spine. You can actually angle this. You can angle it down. You can tweak it here. Bring it a little bit down like this. So in case you're a rock and roll guy or you're a pick up and put down guy, I don't know which one you do, Rich. It's not me a little both. judge. You're a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can see how easily you can now, if you're just a tilty, if you're a roll guy, if you're a pick up and put down, um, if this key were to be bent in here like this, it would be very awkward. You'd really have to kind of reach in to get it. So this is another area that we can adjust. Now, Ryan, on the right hand, not to go back to that, but on baritone saxophone, sometimes the touches are not connected to the That's right. Yeah, so, yep. it's exactly like the G key up here where sometimes we have these arms, big long arms, so we can adjust the right hand stack in berries. Yeah, you can adjust. As long as it's not attached to a pad cup, you can tilt that down, give it a little bit more of a feel so your fingers aren't curled up like this. It's a little bit more natural. But yeah, that is another area on berry. There's a lot of areas on, on saxophone that we can adjust now, to make it feel a little bit more ergonomic. Now, what about key risers? A lot of players have key risers. Are they going to be a factor when you're adjusting the keys? They will be, yes. It's, it's one of those, it's kind of, you know, we're eliminating all the barriers from, from the instrument to the player. We want it to be, for them to feel as connected as possible. Um, so palm keys are notorious for being bent out of proportion. You lay it down, this D palm key gets bent out of proportion. We'll straighten these, you know, we'll do what we need to kind of you know, here we go. I'll just tweak this a little bit like that and make it a little bit more. Oh, okay, that feels much better. But we do take into account the, the size of the player's hand in relation to the touches. So sometimes they might need a, a touch, maybe say on the, the D is fine, but the E flat's just a little bit of space there. Uh, maybe we'll think about putting a, a riser there. And we have a couple different, you know, sizes and, you know, um, I guess heights uh, that we can use on these. But yeah, that's definitely taken into account when it comes to ergonomics and dry fit. Very cool. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for that awesome demonstration. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom, uh, where we go over tips, tricks, and information on instrument repair. Ryan's going to be giving an advanced key fitting course on July 22nd, so give uh, Music Medic a look <laughs> on the 22nd. And the week after that, for you brass technicians who need to bone up on your flute repair, we are doing a flute basics course on the 28th of July. So we've got two courses coming up, one advanced and one basic for saxophone and flute. And then next week, Ryan is going to be here going over how to level a rolled tone hole. So if you've never seen that before, stay tuned for that. That's going to be next week at the same time. Uh, and that's going to do it for us for now. So until next time, happy repairing. I thought we were doing the finger. We're not doing the finger? Okay. Next time. Next time. <laughs>